What's going on there guys? Earthmaster here jumping in on the live stream for an update video on this Saturday, July 24th, 2021 is the date about 6.50 p.m. West Coast time. Looks like an earthquake coming in to the Southern Cal region on that live seismograph station right there. Not for sure how big it is, just kind of popping up there as we speak. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see if this is anything significant. Uh, but far as the latest quake on the globe, it's going to be a 4.3 earthquake down here in this part of the world. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and check out a little bit of information out there from the USGS. Uh, take a look at this activity down here in the southwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. A major uptick in earthquake activity within this region. Pretty significant, let me tell you. Of course, we did have that 6.7 around the Philippines there yesterday. Since then, we did see a, another six-pointer down here near the Kermadec Islands along the Kermadec Trench at about seven kilometers. Uh, some further uh, deep movement up here north towards the Fiji Islands area, uh, roughly about 543 kilometers for a couple of those earthquakes. And then ramping up over here towards the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, and, and the Indonesia area, all seeing a major uptick in deep and uh, somewhat larger magnitude strike in the region there while the northwestern part up here remains really quiet uh, right around the Japan area Japan trench all the way up here to this bend gotta keep an eye on this area it's been quiet and I keep mentioning it folks um, eventually something's gonna change with all the large-scale movement over here towards the Philippines uh, and areas to the south uh, something's got to take place up here uh, eventually so let's talk about the Cascadia subduction zone. I, I covered that a little bit and I keep saying this is an area to watch because uh, well for one I live up here. A lot of people live up here. It's a beautiful community uh, along the coastline uh, but a major quake is just not only going to affect the coastline uh, it will affect uh, areas inland as well. Right now uh, it looks fairly quiet far as the magnitudes go. We're still seeing a little bit of deeper movement um, where was that one? Uh, Oroville. I remember I talked about this one here. It looks like there's another one taking place here around the Oroville area. Uh, 25 kilometers for that 1.6. But we've been watching some deeper movement here in the Cascadia subduction zone over the last uh, few weeks or so. So let's talk about intervals of earthquakes along the Cascadia because I've seen quite a few comments. Oh, uh, earthquakes happen every 500 years. Uh, no, they don't. Let's take a look at the facts uh, and not just someone's guess. Uh, this here is 10,000 years of Cascadia megaquakes. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey scientists, geologists, studied undersea core samples of soil looking for uh, turbidi turbidites. Is that what it's called? Turbidites, deposits of sediments that flow along the ocean floor during large earthquakes. The samples were gathered from more than 50 sites. Uh, during cruises back in 1999, 2002, and 2009. Here's some of the uh, areas where they did some, uh, some of that investigating. So here is the last 10,000 years. We are roughly, looks like here. Looks like that's where we're at, at least according to this map. So back in 1700 uh, is when we had the last nine-pointer 315 years ago. Um, a rupture link the entire rupture of the Cascadia uh, at least a 9.0 uh, back in 1700 315 years ago but much uh, what 321 years now this was put out a few years ago uh, two, well 2009 is what it says uh, for the samples but if you look at this scale right here there's not only full ruptures of the Cascadia but partial ruptures which um, amount to low 8.0 magnitude quakes uh, within the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. And most of those are at the southern end, uh, the southern end of the Cascadia. So we're not going to go way back, right? Uh, there's been definitely a lot of nine pointers, uh, 9.1, um, 9.0. Looks like some of these could be up around 9.2 or so, 9.1 um, for some of the larger full ruptures. 1700. When you go back before that, we look at the year uh, 1468, 547 years ago, uh, had an 8.7. The rupture length, length 621.4 uh, miles. So that's a full rupture. 
This little line right here, 615 years ago, back in 1400 AD, only a short amount of time, look at that. Look at that short amount of time from 1468 uh, to 1400. That's not, a, that's not a lot, 68 years right there. We had an 8.1 first and then a much larger magnitude uh, with a full rupture some 68 years later. So a partial rupture at 137, kilo, uh, 137 miles of rupture length uh, produced an 8.1 magnitude quake. We have not seen any eight pointers in quite some time. In fact, of course then, the last eight pointer that I can see on here um, of a partial rupture is that one back in 1400 because the next one at 8.7 is a full rupture. And then of course, the, uh, the 1700 quake was a full rupture as well. So I'm ex it's very possible we could see uh, not only a full rupture quake because it's been over 300 and uh, uh, something 320 years ago, but uh, a partial rupture as well, up to an 8.1 magnitude or somewhere around the mid eights, uh, and that could do some tremendous damage as well and produce a tsunami. So we don't have to have a full rupture of 621 kilometer uh, length there around the uh, Cascadia. We could have a partial rupture with uh, an incredible magnitude right there. We haven't seen any, folks. It's empty. It's missing. You look at these intervals here, and there's not really a time period where we go beyond what we're seeing here. And according to this, their study, average quake is every 246 years. And we're at 321 years since the last partial rupture or uh, large-scale rupture, full rupture of the Cascadia. So... The intervals of 500 years, I'm not for sure where you're getting your information from, whoever uh, uh, mentioned those comments. But yeah, there, there has been some time, looks like right here, 6,500, 6,000, maybe back in some different plate tectonic times, it seems as, as though things were a little bit more spread out. But as, if you look at this map, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, detailed that we should be coming up on that pretty soon, very soon for a uh, Cascadia rupture. There's no doubt, that's a fact. Uh, not fear mongering, but that is a fact. A little bit of information about the Cascadia subduction zone. I wanna show you this map here. A scenario um, put out by the, uh, I believe it was the USGS here, uh, showing a uh, scenario of a 9.0 quake along the, uh, which would be the entire rupture of the Cascadia. Uh, here you got Northern California, Oregon, Washington, Ca um, Canada region, uh, Vancouver Island, me, I live right here in this orange area, so I'm looking at very strong shaking, potentially severe zone uh, here in Northern California. That could stretch all the way down to Sacramento area. Areas that would be in the extreme shaking, I'm talking landslides, mountains falling off into the ocean. Yes, that's very plausible uh, when we have a 9.0 full rupture here with extreme uh, shaking and very heavy damage, no doubt. That's, that's the shaking. Stretches all the way, it looks like, uh, man. Yeah, Northern California coastline all the way up through Seattle uh, and up to parts of uh, Northwestern Washington right there. And inland, quite a distance for severe shaking. That's extreme. Landslides, stuff falling off in the ocean, not good news. Uh, and if, it's, if that doesn't get you, the subsequent tsunami could. Uh, we're talking some major, um, a major tsunami being produced, similar to what we seen in Japan back in March of 2011. Uh, that could very quickly uh, come upon the land after a major full rupture, uh, but also even a partial rupture along the southern end uh, could produce a major tsunami with a, a 8.0 magnitude earthquake. So the danger is real. The danger is there. Uh, 321 years have passed since we've seen um, the full rupture. We have not had a partial rupture. So that tells me we're either going to see a partial rupture pretty soon or we're going to see a uh, uh, full-scale rupture. Uh, uh, this is information off of the Wikipedia site. A lot of useful, uh, knowledgeable information here. Uh, it talks about the Cascadia subdu subduction zone, a convergent plate boundary. 
uh, and whatnot. It talks about the Explorer Juan de Fuca plate and Gorda plates that move to the east and slide below the much larger, mostly continental North American plate. Let's see what this map, see if it shows anything. Uh, you got the Juan de Fuca plate, Pacific plate, Gorda plate. Gorda is a, just a little bitty plate, man. Eventually that's going to be gone. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be subducted and it will, ex it will not be there anymore. Kind of shows you the boundary, subduction zone, right there, written uh, in plain view. <clears throat> That's where the full-scale rupture uh, could potentially take place. But when I talk about the southern end, roughly around here, 136, 160 km or uh, 60 miles of rupture, uh, just in the south part of the of uh, the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, let's see what we got here. Of course, this goes in the ghost forest and whatnot, talking about how. Uh, trees were, um, you know, swept over from a tsunami. Um, a lot of stuff went on back then. Let me tell you, the only thing I wish I could see is what the tremor was like um, back in that time. What what general earthquake activity were they experiencing prior to this nine pointer that struck in in 1700? Um, so I'm I'm I'm. Uh, Let's see here. 16 foot tsunami that struck the coast of uh, Japan. A lot of information on it, folks. A lot. Uh, tremor, a type of slow fault slip, occurs at regular intervals of 13 to 16 months. Uh, occurs almost along the entire length of the Cascadia. Uh, but of course, Tremor occurs deeper on the subduction interface than the locked area where megathrust earthquakes occur. The depth of a tremor along the subduction interface in Cascadia in, uh, ranges from 28 kilometers down to about 45, and the motion is so slow that it is not felt at the surface by people or animals, but it can be measured um, by these sensitive equipment uh, things that monitor the tremor. <coughs> uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of information here, folks. Um, in 2009, some geologists predicted a 10 to 14 percent probability that the Cascadia will produce an event of 9.0 or higher in the next 50 years. Uh, some studies in 2010 suggested that the risk could be as high as 37 percent for earthquakes of magnitude 8.0. That would be the partial rupture. Um, of course, I don't think anyone's prepared for that much of, of a uh, magnitude quake. Here is a pretty cool map that kind of shows you the general direction of the plate movements in the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, arrows pointing together indicate um, subduction, right? Certain areas you got these. Uh, we see a lot of earthquakes along the Blanco fracture zone recently, and that's the uh, left to right looks like motion. But at the same time, I still think that uh, with all the tremor, uh, the mass amount of tremor, when when it increases, I even though there's intervals, I believe that um, that ultimately adds further strain on that region. I think any any activity here, this is all connected. So, if people were to say, "Oh, this earthquake over here in the Blockholm fracture zone does not affect the Cascadia one bit," I call I I don't agree with that. Um, any action, any activity within this region. Uh, plays a major part whether relieving stress or adding stress onto the uh, already uh, built up area of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's a fact. So as I mentioned last night, the likelihood of seeing something here on the west coast or in the Japan area pretty soon, um, I'm kind of sticking to that story because it just we haven't seen the release of pressure out here in Japan yet, nor on the West Coast. I kind of wanted to go back and look at the tremor activity prior to the 2000, 2011, March 11th, 2011, uh, 9.0 earthquake there in Japan. It was, uh, let's see, I think I have that pulled up here. I was kind of looking at this. See right here, 2011, um, this was afterwards. That's right, this is afterwards. And there was still significant tremor. Uh, and the reason why I'm kind of pointing this out is because 
a lot of folks there was a couple articles I read and I can't find it for whatever reason it got buried underneath the underneath the uh, the web so to speak that the nine pointer that struck back in 2011 in Japan a relieved pressure kind of kind of put off the big one um, from happening in California just due to the massive amount of plate adjustment way over there on the other side of the Pacific plate uh, where that uh, epicenter of the 9.0 struck in Japan I can't find it I've been looking for it. I remember reading the article it was a legit article I can't find it now but I wanted to look at trimmer because I think trimmer is going to play a major part in um, um, future studies of the Cascadia subduction zone um, after the big one hits but this is after the 9.0 struck in Japan March 12 2011 to about March 20th 2011 and there was still some heightened activity uh, we still continued to see trimmer along the Cascadia but we did see um, a lack of earthquakes at the surface in this region um, this map here is prior this map here is prior to the March 11th uh, 2011 9.0 earthquake in Japan this is surface rupture 4.5 and above we had seen a pretty significant swarm of movement uh, just within about a week's time, a couple days time off the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone area and also down uh, south here along Ferndale, some deeper movement. Um, that all stopped um, right after the 9, right after the 9.0 struck um, the Japan area. This is um, March 12th, the day after the 9.0 back in 2011 up to uh, March 18, 2011, so uh, a few days time following that big quake in Japan. Notice the lack of movement off here, just only some small quakes in the, uh, in the into the subduction zone of the Cascadia, uh, but we've, we've seen that lack of, of moderate magnitude quakes here that was happening in the block room fracture zone area. Um, and it looked generally like we had seen a, uh, a little bit less activity along the west coast following uh, those days or following um, following that 9.0 earthquake there in Japan. So I believe honestly it did relieve a little bit of stress. Um, but now I think we're kind of in limbo with the lack of activity here in Japan along the western uh, northwestern part. Uh, I, 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 I think we're um, we're on that teeter totter. You know which one's going to go first as far as. Uh, uh, seen some major movement and it's been a while it's it's been a while since we have any had any significant movement up here to the north uh, yes we did have that nine pointer up up there right here in the japan trench area back in 2011 and there's been some other larger ones but all too quiet over the past few months uh, when it comes to large magnitude quakes here in this region and it's a it's a hot spot of activity let me tell you and it right now it's it's a dull spot and that's very um fishy it, something's building it's definitely building in, in this area and I think uh, one of the two has got to give here either it's gonna be the West Coast Cascadia uh, potentially down here or the um, <clears throat> the Japan area Japan I'm thinking right here northward up into this bend so we'll have to keep an eye on it today definitely a lot of movement taking place here uh, throughout the Indonesia area and down through Tonga and Kermadec Trench area very quiet up here uh, let's see. So let's check out the trimmer for. Just remember, folks. Look at this graph. If you want to check it out, there's uh, all you got to do is um, this one's a pretty neat one. It kind of you can click on it and get a little bit uh, more detailed information on it. The width, uh, rupture width. That's pretty crazy, and um, it gives you all the information on it uh, just by hovering over the uh, the uh, the graph here. It's pretty cool. Um, Looks like OregonLive.com is the host for this map. Pretty neat to check out, but you got to remember we're about right, right about here, <clears throat> right about here, and we're looking like a pretty good gap in activity. It's just it's a matter of time, folks. I feel it. I feel we're very close um, for this baby to go. Um, what was I going to check out? Oh, trimmer. Trimmer map real quick along the Cascadia. The most recent trimmer still shows some activity in Northern California. 
Uh, we seen this last night as well. We're getting a lot of movement down here to the south, a lot of movement. And with the, uh, the trimmer, not only down here in the south, we had that huge cluster up here a few weeks ago in Oregon. It just lasted for, it seemed like a couple weeks, a lot of buildup. A lot of buildup on this southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, the locked area. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very possible we could see that uh, pop off first, but I wouldn't be surprised. And it looked historically like even though we've seen a partial rupture, uh, historically speaking, uh, along the Cascadia, uh, that was quickly followed, followed up 68 years later by a full rupture. I'm not talking hundreds of years. All it took was a partial rupture and then 68 years later, a full rupture of 9.0, 9.1. So uh, we're, we're getting close, folks. I just have that strange feeling. So 122 epicenters. I do want to go check the last week of trimmer and see what we can pull up. It didn't move much, did it? It almost looks like the same area. That's because it is. But look at the numbers here. 918 epicenters over over a few days period here and mostly once again right into northern california area let me make sure that did it right let me go back let's go back two weeks something looked a little weird right there so yeah we added a little bit of the oregon uh, trimmer into the mix uh, but most of it definitely down here at the southern end very southern end you can't get any more southern than that uh, and that's why we are kind of seeing some of that deeper movement out near Oroville. A lot of deep movement up here off the coast as well into the Cascadia uh, regions. Uh, let's bring back the newest or the uh, latest map, all magnitudes here. And you can zoom in. You can see that little quake. We've seen this happen yesterday. And I was kind of curious about it because that's some deep movement taking place. And I believe it's affected... Um, the trimmer down there is affecting the crust above it, the North American plate. That's why we're seeing all this deeper movement. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm kind of curious to see if they left that on there. They, they did. So, here's the 1.6. Is this one from last night or from the night before? Yeah. Let me see if they reviewed this yet because it was it's still on automatic couple days later it's still on automatic come on guys got some deep movement going on and, and nobody's looking into it Let's see if this one's been re reviewed nope still automatic so we're getting some uh, we're getting some deeper movement for sure Um, underneath the North American plate. So we definitely, uh, man, be on guard, folks. Like I say, it's either here or it's going to be Japan. Something's brewing big time, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, far as normal, normal, <laughs> far as other earthquake activity here into Northern California, it's a movement around the uh, Willows area. It looks like Sacramento River, uh, 2.3, some deeper movement there as well. And I don't believe that's associated with the water. It possibly could be, but that's way down there, 17 kilometers. Uh, it just coincides with, you can almost see a line of activity, can't you? See that line? Kind of coincides with the, uh, the, you know, the trimmer that we're seeing there. Let's go back and check out that trimmer uh, over the last, uh, just a day today. Even though we're north, even though this trimmer is north, I believe... Um, that plays a part regionally as locally regionally here uh, as as producing some uh, some earthquake activity a little bit further up remember these are what 25 to 45 kilometers deep for the most part trimmer is but you can get some uh, you know a little bit more shallower but I think that's activity in general is playing a part with the movement here at the southern end of the Cascadia uh, the the subduct the subduction zone way underneath there way underneath this North American plate because most of these earthquakes here Orville's deep 25 kilometers the one here near Willow Sacramento River 17 kilometers this one's kind of odd that one's very shallow 
Uh, let's see if this has been reviewed. Nope, automatic still, automatic. That's deep right there, 23 kilometers for this region. So just be on guard, folks. Um, you know, I'd, I, I hope to be... Um, I'd like to think this trimmer monitoring will be useful for predicting uh, future mega quakes along the Cascadia. I think the trimmer plays a major part in buildup of stress along the lock section. So 320 years, folks, 321 years. Uh, and there's been a lot of plate movement, a lot of adjustment, a lot of stress, a lot of buildup over that time frame. Uh, a little bit further south, there's still that cluster of quakes into the Antelope Valley area. Not as much today, about 53 aftershocks following uh, that six, point, uh, six pointer that struck a couple weeks ago now. So movement throughout the Nevada, uh, Nevada area in the minor region. Ridgecrest, awfully quiet. Look at that, only a few small microquakes taking place along the uh, along that uh, earthquake uh, aftershock area where the uh, ridge qu ridge crest quakes hit a couple years ago and uh, some movement down along the San Jacinto fault area no swarming to report what do we got down here into the San Diego area 2.1 24 kilometers some deep movement down there as well that's another deep movement. We're just seeing quite a bit of deep movement along the Pacific side <clears throat> Excuse me, of the plate. Uh, further inland, looking pretty quiet. Uh, as far as Idaho, Montana goes, not a whole lot of movement here. Let's check out Yellowstone, see what's going on into the Yellowstone area. Swarming has died down over here underneath the Lake Yellowstone, but we have seen an increase in swarming over here around Maple Creek area. You can see this seismic activity ramping up pretty good a separate swarm from the uh, Yellowstone Lake area it's, it's a swarm of its own uh, and there's quite a fit quite a bit on here it looks like maybe 50 or so small uh, microquakes USGS not reporting those uh, currently this is the all magnitude you can see that nothing being reported from them into the Yellowstone area but uh, there's definitely swarming there's a lot of swarming taking place here uh, let's see what else we got here over here around the new Madrid fault system. We got a little earthquake striking uh, right smack dab in that region. 2.0, 8.0 kilometers below surface. Build up of stress there as well. East coast looking pretty quiet as far as uh, any activity goes. Puerto Rico calming down as well. Just a few uh, twos and threes on the southwest edge, Puerto Rico area. Nothing really into the Puerto Rico Trench for now. Uh, South America seeing some deeper movement into the, uh, looks like the Santiago area. And uh, Argentina as well, getting into some deep movement. 4.4 uh, at 216 kilometers down dip of the Peru-Chile Trench. But uh, man, a lot, going, a lot taking place over here, folks, but uh, man, just it, it's hard to say what's going to happen, folks. We can't predict it, but I know time's getting short. We can look at trends. We can look at uh, four shocks. I mean, there was a... I remember the Tokyo quakes. I don't know if I have that pulled up still or not. Um, I think I may have... Uh, let's see. I was looking at all the aftershock activity in the uh, Japan area <clears throat> prior to that 9.0. Uh, back in 2011 and they had a uh, they had a 7.1 uh, prior and that was followed up by a bunch of fours a bunch of fives and then another 6.3 all within the same area and then uh, a couple days later is when that nine pointer hit so you know you look at you look at general earthquake activity and you think well that's that's the main quake right there because you know because that's the highest magnitude but no no one really knows if that's going to be the main quake you can't really assume it uh, you just have to see what time uh, and mother nature wants to do when it comes to um, you know making stuff move but uh, <clears throat> I don't know folks you know I just uh, just be on guard I'm on guard because I live out here in Northern California and eight pointer is going to shake things up out here tremendously uh, and I will know it that's for sure uh, but a full rupture uh, I don't even know if I'll be on YouTube 
It might uh, definitely take down the system, uh, take down the electrical grid, and, and no telling what else for an extended time. But uh, it's it's getting short, folks. Time is getting short. Every day is getting shorter. Just be prepared, uh, be on guard, and always have an earthquake plan. Have lots of food, have lots of water, keep cash on you, uh, because the banks, sure enough, are probably won't be open. Uh, stores will probably be down. Just always good to... Um, Think in a survivalist type of mode. I'm always thinking like that. I got tons of gas stored up, uh, and of course, you want to do that safely. Uh, tons of food, tons of water, uh, tons of TP, of course. Um, you know, stuff that you could survive on. Say, say if you were going camping for a month or so, you got to make sure that you have enough um, commodities and items to to uh, live on. Because it's going to be rough when that happens out here. <clears throat> uh, let's see here, folks. I think that's about it. I went up to uh, Stony Gorge Lake today. It's a reservoir uh, about 30 miles west of Willows up in the mountains a little bit. Uh, man, absolutely horrible drought conditions up there uh, all over Northern California. 7% capacity for that lake. Uh, it's horrible. It looks, it looks bad. Uh, but I'm going to start a series of uh, documentations of the lakes and uh, recreational areas here in California. I'm uh, going to be doing uh, uh, some video documentation of what the drought has done to all these lakes, uh, current lake levels, and uh, talk to some park rangers and whatnot and see what, uh, uh, see what they have to say about it. But uh, the first in the series is already up on the channel. That's Stony Gorge Lake uh, in Northern California, Glen County. I went up there to check it out because I've been up there quite a few times. And uh, I was uh, pretty depressed with what I've seen today. It's absolutely horrid. But uh, look for future videos of uh, other recreational uh, lakes here in Northern California that I will be covering on uh, pretty soon. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there. It is Saturday night party night for, for some, not for me. I'll be staying home and... Uh, just uh, playing it safe. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out.